Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. And in this particular video, what I wanted to do was talk about our next shape that we are going to create, and that's the parabola. Now, the parabola by itself isn't actually, you know, such a complex um, set of math or anything like that. But what I'm, I'm trying to do throughout all these shapes and stuff like that is show you, you know, the math behind uh, things like uh, the nodes, like in Substance Designer, or um, the shapes and stuff like that that you find in a lot of image editing applications. And what we can do is we can apply that same math to 3D shapes as well inside of Houdini. And you'll find that once you start to utilize uh, these particular shapes and you start to blend noises in with them, you're actually starting to produce kind of the basic functionality of what Substance Designer does, right? And we're doing that here inside of Houdini. So it's really important to you know learn all these kind of staple math um, functions and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's go and drop down a geometry container over here and I'm just going to call this the parabola uh, video all right and we're going to jump inside I'm going to delete that I'm just going to hide all the other objects so we can only see what's inside of this geometry node itself okay and to get started what I'm going to do is uh, drop down a circle and we're going to switch that circle over to a polygon okay we're going to make it sit on the ZX plane so it's nice and flat uh, but you'll notice that if you have your back face calling turned on by default the circle is actually reversed um, and you can turn this or toggle this on and off by going to the optimize tab so you hit D on the keyboard that's how I brought up this window here hit D on the keyboard and you can say remove back faces or not all right I usually like to keep it on just so I know when my geometry is reversed to now you, if you've watched any of the videos, I go back and forth with that, you know. Um, but it's good practice to leave it on, just so you know if your geometry is reversed. So with this in place, I'm just going to drop down a reverse node, like so. And uh, what we're going to do now is drop down a poly extrude, because I need divisions inside of this circle, all right? And I need them to radiate, radiate out from the center. All right, and so to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the radius X here, this parameter, just by right-clicking on it and pasting it right there. And then what I want to do is I also want to paste it into the inset value. And what that does is it brings it all the way into the center. Cool. And so now we can easily add divisions in a circular fashion. All right, so this is perfect. Okay, so um, the last thing I want to do is just drop down a fuse node. And the reason being is if we turn on our point numbers at this point, you can see that we have a bunch of numbers all sitting in the center there. And that's just because when we inset it, all the points um, from each of these edges here are meeting up at the center. So we just want to fuse that. So that way uh, we don't have all those extra points. And now we have just a single point, point 12. Okay, uh, let's add a couple more divisions too to the circle. And let's turn off our point numbers. Cool. So what we can do now is we can drop down that attribute wrangle node. So I'm just going to hit tab on the keyboard here and let's do an attribute wrangle. Again, you could do a point uh, wrangle as well. And I am going to then jump inside of this particular node and hit alt E on the keyboard. And this is going to bring up the script editor for that particular wrangle node. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to produce a gradient from the center all the way out to the edge. So I want it to be completely black at the edge and I want it to be completely white at the center. Now this is relatively easy to do. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is find the position of the center of this particular object. So I'm going to call this local variable center and what we're going to do is utilize that distance method and we're going to compare the current point position that we're running over because remember we're running over all the points so for every single point here I'm going to test its distance from the center. All right so we'll say at P and uh, and I actually got a little bit ahead of myself. I actually wanted to do the get BB box. I, I just wanted to finish the video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we want to get the center, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a, a float called gradient, this local variable called gradient. And then we're going to use the, uh, the distance function there, okay? And we're going to compare the current position with center, and that's a vector, all right? So we can compare it. And what this distance function is going to do is it's going to return a float distance basically okay and that uh, will basically give us a gradient that we can utilize all right so if we were to 
say at CD equals zero, like so. Now we get black. And then if we did at CD equals uh, gradient, you'll see that we now have a gradient that goes from white to black. Okay. And we can also flip it just by doing a one minus, like so. So we have a nice fall off. And that by itself, you might think that that is a parabola. It looks very similar to the parabola shape that you see inside a substance designer. But if we were to add that to the position dot y, so let's say at p dot y plus equals our one minus gradient here, you get a cone. And that is not exactly what I want, but ta-da, we have a cone, just like so, all right? So if you needed a cone shape, that is literally how you would do it. It's super easy, all right? But what we want to do is we want to create this nice arced shape, more of a parabola shape. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, so let's first do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, I'm going to actually pump the uh, gradient. Or actually, what I'm going to do is just build in that 1 minus, because I want that fall off, basically, like so. So I, I can get rid of the 1 minus here on the gradient, or on the color value. So now we have an inverted cone. All right, so we should probably do a minus equals. And actually, we might not need that minus equals there. Uh, we need the plus equals. There we go. All right, so now that we have that value, all we really need to do is take this gradient to a power. So let's do a pow, and we'll just take it to a power of two and hit apply. You'll notice that now we're getting this kind of cool shape. It's, it's a parabola, but we are getting half the parabola on one side and half the parabola on the other side. All right, what we really want to do is uh, subtract this right here. All right, and we still get that same overall shape. And that is because we are um, doing this one minus here. So we don't necessarily need to do that. And right off the bat, you can see now we get not that inverted parabola. We get the proper parabola now, but it's now below the plane. All right. And what we really want to do is we want to adjust the height of this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is create another float value and just call this height. And we're going to hook it up to a float channel called height like so. All right. And we'll just hit apply to that. And what we can do now is produce that parameter over here and just give it a value just so it's not zero right off the bat. And all we need to do is just multiply that by the power that we're doing. All right, so hit apply. And that now is affecting the overall height. Perfect. And then what we want to do is we want to get it back above the plane based off of that height. All right, so let's subtract the height from it in this case and that should be correct and that gets it back onto the plane all right so let apply and accept and now we have a parabola shape that we can actually adjust and we need to simply just invert our color gradient for visualization purposes all right and that my friends is how we do a parabola all right there's lots of stuff you can do from this point on in terms of creating more curved shapes and stuff like that I always highly recommend uh, Wikipedia or some of the math references like Khan Academy. They, they always have to do a great job of explaining you know, math functions and stuff like that. So um, these videos that I'm making around these shapes are more about how we create the shapes and noises that we see in things like Substance Designer because one of my goals is to utilize all those particular functions um, inside of Houdini and specifically for the Houdini engine so I can have you know, those, that kind of power inside of um, Unity and inside of Unreal. So these are the kind of those basic core components that, that everyone should know when you start working with procedural modeling and the Houdini engine itself. All right, so that is what I had for you guys today. Thanks so much. I'll see you and talk to you in a bit.